The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, David White. And welcome all to another excellent edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your wonderful host. And as always, it doesn't matter where you're at or where I'm at, as long as we're both here at the appointed time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. Well, numbers were good. Much better than people feared uh, and probably way too oversold at the moment, uh, as we've said very many times before. Uh, the problem with bear markets is that the bears still hardly ever get the fact that the market's only going down about a fourth or a third of the time. It's uh, going up the rest of the time. It just goes down significantly faster in bear markets than it goes up. And the opposite is the truth. You're going down about a fourth of the time, even in bull markets. It's just uh, that pullback isn't that much. And, of course, the moves tend to be much uh, better and bigger and compound. But, uh, you know, uh, could we get a pullback here? I'd love to see a pullback kind of around the lows of uh, today before we got the numbers. Uh, and I think we could get it. There's not a whole lot out here uh, screaming for higher prices quite yet. As we said yesterday, I suspect we're probably going to see something like 4,000 in the S&P cash. I know a lot of people uh, talking a lot more. I'm not that optimistic, at least now. I don't have to make that decision until we get there. Uh, so I will continue as we talked uh, before. I tend to trade uh, in the same way that I would drive in, hog in highly foggy conditions. And that's knowing that although I think I can see farther, I know that I can't. That uh, generally in bull markets, the tendency is to think that you can see fairly far out, and you can. The downside of uh, bear markets is being very sure the market's going to go lower shorting every small move higher and giving back all the ill-gotten gains you had from being correct on being a bear. So the, the, the big thing is either you become a bear and you just walk away, throw the newspapers, turn off the TV, and come back a year later. But if you're a trader in a bear market, uh, you want to know that uh, there's a lot of movement to the upside. It tends to be rather uh, short-lived. Uh, and generally you have a lot of days with just a little bit higher. Um, but uh, today is a kind of a sign of strength. Uh, we broke through the what it was about a 37.90 on the S&P cash. Uh, my guess is, in fact, let's go ahead and check in right now on the volume. Uh, we got about 7.5 billion shares, so just a tad under what we had yesterday. But, of course, it's a Friday going into the weekend. Maybe a lot of folks... Uh, on the wrong side, uh, maybe doing a little short squeeze and getting out before the weekend, so they have to don't think about it. But uh, the end of the world is not nigh. Um, if you were correct on that and you bet on the end of the world, the problem is there won't be any counterparty to give you that money back. So you should know that uh, eh, you can make a lot of money in a bear market being both bullish and bearish. But, uh, yeah, if you're going to be bearish, either have a very long time horizon or a very short one. Uh, the problem is that a lot of people try to get into that medium range, and it's very tough to sit through those if you're not massively can, uh, committed uh, to uh, the downside and knowing that it's going to take a long time uh, for everything to pan out. Eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. Email me at path at tfnn.com. And, of course, you can always put a message in the den. So we'll go ahead and uh, uh, see what else here. Uh, 
Okay, Let's see if there's anything else here. Um, I'm still getting used to Discord as a presenter. Okay, let's get back there. There we go. Uh, see what I what, 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 <laughs> Okay, uh, we've got that. Eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. As we come to the microphones at this appointed time, uh, the S and P's up just a hair under ninety. Dow's up six forty five. Nasdaq's up uh, two sixty five. And uh, we'll check in with some of the other things out there. Crude oil's up uh, about two and a half percent, one hundred six ninety. Uh, gold's kind of uh, you're sitting around there like a dead fish on the dock. Uh, 1829 and flat is what I show. Uh, we got a lot of stocks moving, and I think that is because we did break above those levels, as we talked about, that was the trading range. Um, I'm hoping to get a bit of a pullback to get some better risk reward and go long uh, again on some other positions. But uh, I do digress. Um, let's do a little. Well, I don't think I have any history today. I don't think anything really mattered. So why don't we just go into some of the questions and some of the charts. Uh, the one that I uh, was really looking at yesterday uh, continues to be uh, interesting. Let's see if I can get that back uh, in here. Uh, and the first one is, uh, look forward to your comments on the cues. So let's go ahead and pop that chart up. Uh, well, let's do this one first since I had it already up. And uh, this was a comment I had yesterday on the XLV. Uh, and you got it pretty much everything you're looking for. Uh, I would have probably sold it yesterday, just figuring the risk reward for possible bad numbers out here and giving back the money was it. But uh, you're pretty much stuck right at that confluence level of 128.21 to one. 2817. You're just a hair above that now, 12841. But generally, I'm going to say 80% of the time you get to a confluence level like that, you're probably, it doesn't mean that the bull case is dead, but uh, generally you can easily pull back uh, to uh, the 382 or even a 50%, and that would be 124.84 or 123.68, and then maybe that sets up an ABC that can break through this 128 level. So does anything ever work 100% of the time? The answer is no, but uh, you've got kind of the makings of a little uh, hanging man out here in doji speak, uh, and you fill the three gaps from lower, although they're not absolutely perfect, but they're pretty good. So I would, uh, I'd be looking at this as probably on a trade basis, not an investment basis. As, uh, as I said yesterday, pretty close to ringing the register if you have not already. Uh, let's take a quick look at the cues and look at uh, all you. Again, uh, oh, back in a we'll look at this. Uh, but yeah, the volume's kind of light. Uh, but uh, we got uh, a nice gap. Uh, probably heading its way to uh, 300. Uh, we may need to back and fill it. back in a In a time of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a tier one mining district. This is a large scale, low cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd feasibility study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ.
Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month. And try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-873-7618 as we come back uh, i got a lot of questions uh flying in of course you can always do that uh, via phone at 877-927-6648 or through the email at path at tfnn.com. Uh, question in here, uh, do you suspect that uh, looking for reshorts uh, until late June 30th at the earliest? And if I'm going to say that uh, we're talking about next week, uh, I would say much more likely after the three-day weekend for the 4th of July. So you, you're kind of right. I would just put it off. Generally, when you have, uh, historically, when you have big moves uh, in the summer, they're right after or uh, through the week uh, after you get back from the 4th of July. And uh, I've heard a lot of people talk about the different reasons why, but you get three days off and you go on vacation and you get a chance to think a little bit. You're not in such a rush. Uh, and, uh, you know, you, you get out in the heat, get away from the TV, and your ideas tend to congeal. And a lot of people are either getting more bullish or more bearish uh, during the summer months. But uh, they tend to have a lot of action after the three-day weekend. Part of it is uh, the volume really starts to decrease going into that three-day uh, uh, weekend for the July 4th. And I tend to not like to be short, quiet markets until you come back. So I'd much rather be uh, on the uh, night of the 4th uh, in looking at futures or equities on the 5th uh, if I was going to short than on the 30th. So that is part of it. Let's see what else do we have. we got lots of emails here. Uh, okay. Uh, next one is on MU, Micron, and what's going on in it. There's a, we talked about the uh, huge overhang of GPU uh, video cards, and Micron's biggest uh, meal ticket is selling the VRAM that goes on those cards for the most part. Uh, you had a nice little bounce up and you filled the gap on it today, a little bit of a pullback off those highs. It, it had been kind of shorted fairly strongly around 57, so kind of looks like they ran a lot of the stops. 
My thoughts are more about late uh, August or September on these. Um, I'm writing an article today in the Tech Insider about why I think uh, that even with the overhang of existing um, uh, GPUs, that video cards, if you're in Lutes, Florida, uh, is there. I mean, it is a thing, but uh, there may be a catalyst that a lot of people are not thinking about, uh, and uh, that'll go out here either before the show or uh, by 3:30 today. So there's, I'm not a, I'm not long term bearish. I think that there is a, a a story to be told opposite to the end of the world uh, that everybody's going on. But uh, you know the biggest part of their uh, business is selling absolutely scads amount. I'm because some of the new video cards coming out this year are going to have 32 gigabytes of memory, and two years ago four was big. So these guys are going to be selling a lot of memory. It's the highest margin stuff they sell. And I think that there is a case to be made. But like I said, I think it has more to do about whether or not they can cause an upgrade cycle uh, in that market. Uh, to, to. So I like it. But uh, again, I'm thinking that uh, the energy this came down on, uh, you could spend out into mid-August or maybe even 1st of September before Micron and a lot of the semis, AMD, NVIDIA. Now, of course, everybody shorts the living daylights out of NVIDIA, uh, Micron, and AMD. And AMD's the perpetual redheaded child getting beaten on a daily basis by everybody shorting it. Um, I don't think it's as bad as a lot of people are making it out to be. There is some. And uh, they're tending to make it, uh, I think the glass is kind of half full, not half empty. Uh, and they think the glass is totally empty. So they tend to short, over short this and you have some nice moves. Uh, but uh, yeah. Uh, we're going to go to Riverview, Florida, which is not Lutz. How are you doing today, Fish? Hey, Dave. Good. about yourself? Fantastic. Hey, I got a question for you. I am uh, 55 years old, and I have all of my 401k at the moment in cash. So my question is, would today be a good time to put a certain percentage of my 401k, say, into the S&P 500, or would you wait for the big flush? Well, we had a high-volume low. Now, that didn't break the low. But 75% of high volume, maybe 80% of high volume lows get tested probably within three months. Okay. So what is your time horizon? Uh, well, I'm 55. Um, well, I meant, so I mean, are, are, are you going to trade your IRA out on a weekly basis or anything? Um, say again? Are you going to trade your IRA out on a weekly or a biweekly or a monthly basis? Or are you thinking to buy something and hold it for six months? Yeah. Or are you buy and hold? And like I said, it's it's in a four hundred one k from my and employer, and a hundred percent of it right now is in cash, okay. just in a so you know. Do you have to go long? Market, do you have to go fund? Yeah. Do you have to so, buy on the end of the question. month? What are the restrictions <laughs> for me? Yeah. What do you have to buy at the end of the month or sell at the end of the month? No. Or? No. Okay. Um, here's what I'm thinking. 80% chance you go back and retest the recent lows because they had huge volume. That's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. So can I say, is uh, 80% 100%? No. But um, it, it's high enough that I would wait. Generally, cool. when you get the high volume uh, rejections of the lows, uh, as Wyckoff called them, a selling climax, you'll get a bounce for a while and then you'll come back. So okay. we did 18 we did 18 billion shares what you are really looking for for the best odds is something like a 12 billion share day back at the recent lows maybe okay. you know maybe even I lighter every than day that and I'm a subscriber so I'll hear okay. what you're what you're saying in the future Yeah you just want a light volume test of the previous low your odds go up significantly um, um 
I don't think that there's a whole lot of reasons uh, to uh, be getting all kinds of froggy. Surprises in bear markets are to the downside, and we're in a bear market until, at least in my opinion, until the market proves itself. Okay. And that will be a lighter volume test of the previous low. But, uh, yeah, the, the way Wyckoff called it uh, was a selling climax, and yes. that, that's it. It's just in a short term – there's everybody going short or selling at the same time, and it just burns itself out for a little while. But those embers are still there. They're still kind of glowing. And uh, Smokey the Bear would say, unless cool. you extinguish them, there could still be a fire. So, so uh, okay. best so thing to do. I, I mean, at best, I was going to do maybe 25%, but I'll just hold off. Yeah, I don't see any day. reason to do anything. If we're going to have a big rally, it's probably going to start in September. We'll right. Shout out to the Nug Man. The Nug Man. <laughs> Thank okay. you. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, the Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that we'll even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Hey, we're back. A uh, question about the TLT. And uh, I may have accidentally deleted it. But uh, let's see here. I think I did. Yeah, sorry about that. Question if you were short uh, uh, TLT at 114, where would you cover out here? You got a nice reversal pattern out here today. So I'd say. Uh, any close above 115.17 uh, would suggest that you're going to go up to 118. 
So don't know how much you have in there, how long you're committed to the dark side of lower on the TLT, but uh, I don't see any reason to do anything here uh, today. And uh, yeah, 115.17 close or above would say you're probably on the wrong side of it. You got about five days over here on the left hand side of the chart, starting on the sixth and going through the tenth uh, before it gapped down, and that's resistance. So, uh, yeah, not looking bad. Yesterday or today would have been good uh, initiations. You don't have a lot of volume. I'm not a big fan. I think that there's better risk rewards in other vehicles right now, but uh, the chart's not bad. Uh, okay, sentiment, uh, people running up meme stocks like Revlon. It uh, shows that there's nowhere close to a major market low. I don't know about that. I saw a lot of those stocks uh, kind of like that during the dot-com bubble. Um, back then, uh, if you were short something, uh, the real problem was if they went bankrupt, you had to get shares. You had to actually cover the shares. And if you couldn't, you were kind of always stuck with uh, being on the opposite side of that trade. And uh, people actually made a business selling a nickel share stock for a buck to people to get out and get it off the books of the trades. It's not like that anymore. I think it changed in 2007 or eight because of a lot of that. But uh, always a uh, interesting idea that some of the mechanics of the market dictate more than what's going on there. But uh, yeah, eh, but, you know, eh, again, if you're short, you need to cover, um, cover why you can, not when you have to. And that's the problem with uh, highly shorted stocks that everybody's knowing is going broke. Once you get 80, 85% of uh, what you think is going to be out of it, don't uh, hang around for Cinderella to turn uh, into a pumpkin at midnight. I may have mixed some metaphors there, but that's how I win that award every year. So, yep, uh, I don't think that there's anything going on there. Uh, question uh, from Hector out here about FISServe, uh, a fine uh, fintech kind of company. And, of course, uh, we've got uh, a kind of a nice pop out here. Now, I'm a big fan of going after the double gap and uh, seeing stocks top out. You're kind of in resistance now. Uh, and in a bear market, generally, I sell even earlier than I would in a bull market. Uh, but uh, you've got this gap, and it's right about, I'm going to call it 95 50. Uh, but that's where I'd be checking out if I was in this thing. That almost sets up an ABC on the way down. Um, didn't have a lot of volume today. You may never get to that uh, 95, 50 area. But uh, generally, you know, if you were going to go short, I'd have to wait until 95, 50. Uh, if I was long, uh, sell when you can, not when you have to. The old mixed metaphors uh, award. Okay. Okay, what else do we have? Okay, we answered that question. We answered that question. We answered that question. Uh, what's the rest of the day going to do? Um, I'm not exactly sure how many people want to go in short into this weekend. Um, volume's not all that conditional. I was more thinking that we would uh, be uh, flat into the numbers this morning and give me an opportunity to go long. Now I'm going to be waiting for the market to pull back and go long. But at the moment, uh, not a lot going on in this one. Uh, the business is okay. It's not great uh, in a rising interest rate environment. Uh, on a chart basis, though, you've got a very good uh, part where you're looking at 95.50, uh, where in a bear market, uh, I would be ringing the register. Uh, okay. Now we got some more emails flooding in, uh, but uh, you can be like the Noog man and call me at eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. And uh, question on the IBB, so we'll take a look at it. Uh, not much movement today. Um, 
you're kind of up against resistance. Uh, there were a couple of uh, things out, especially in the CRISPR stocks, uh, that uh, showed some weakness. Um, you've got kind of a little hanging man up here on about two-thirds of the volume of the previous eye, uh, going back at 1967, he said. That's the June 8th high. So you're certainly into there with lighter volume today. You're not really backing off of it. Um, there is some thoughts. I mean, you got some decent energy off the bottom. It's not uh, it's not horrifically bad off uh, this. You did test the bottom on lighter volume. Now you're testing the top on lighter volume, and that is the real definition of a uh, of a uh, uh, a uh, trending or not trending a uh, range bound. Uh, vehicle, but uh, yeah, I'd have to probably with the light volume ring the register and wait for Monday. You can always buy again. Uh, okay, I can move in a 401 from the spies temporarily and then back to cash. Still too risky. I can move the day and markets per year if that's a go percentage. What would you put in temporarily? I do watch the market and showed. Versus an active person, um, the risk reward here uh, would be a test of today's low on much lighter volume, and then you're really talking about 200 points to the upside. Probably uh, is what I'd be looking for. Everything else would probably be a little piggy, and as they say, bears make money and bulls make money, and pigs get slaughtered. So I'm not looking for that much higher out here. Maybe we go straight there, and I don't get any pullback. But I would much rather, uh, if you're thinking about doing something temporarily, think that uh, you could, uh, you know, get a pullback, get give back what we had today, do it on lighter volume, and that may be the move. But again, if you're in a 401k, I'm not chasing pennies. Um, you're kind of uh, throwing dollars out in front of a steamroller and hoping you don't fall. I would much rather, uh, especially in a 401k. Go with a leveraged vehicle, if you can, on the upside, once you get that retest. I think that the risk-reward on that would be far better than trying to go after uh, what's going to be kind of uh, uh, very fast markets up to maybe 4,000. Now, maybe we do better than that, and I'm wrong. But uh, all we know is what we know today and what we've seen in the past. And my experience has said that uh, in a bear market, uh, don't wait until the clock strikes midnight, especially since uh, in most places, uh, there's no clock at all. They just kind of guess at when midnight is, and then everybody wants to get out at the same time. Uh, as they say in the den, pigs go wee, wee, wee all the way home. We'll be back in a minute. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. And as we get back here, uh, another question. Uh, I bought uh, Mo yesterday at forty-one fifty. I have a stop at forty. Got a nice little bounce out here. Uh, you don't have a whole lot of volume. Uh, expect the market uh, going into July 4th and then down just like you. Sold in May and went away. Looking for a fall rally election, usually long spies or short spies. Thanks. Uh, I don't know if there's a really a question in there. I guess we'll take a look at this. I mean, the big thing I have out here is you're going to get a retest of 41 bucks, And... Um, yeah, I don't know what the time scale you were in this. I would probably ring the register. Um, stocks in a downtrend uh, going into an uptrend generally have a much higher uh, uh, possibility of retesting that low. Um, you know, I think you made some good short-term money. You got no volume here today, hanging doji. Do you have to go all the way back to 41 bucks? No, but could you get back to like 41.75 or something before it starts going? Probably consolidation after this move down. Again, a lot of stocks that uh, came down hard, uh, bounce came back, retested volume on a lighter volume um, are probably pretty good. If they tested on heavier volume, uh, generally they're U bottoms, and that U generally means that you're going to retest the lows. I think there are better stocks out here than this. Uh, and the news cycle, probably not going to get any better for these guys. Uh, still watching Intel. Intel did not have a good week out here. Um, they've introduced uh, video cards to get in uh, and compete with AMD and NVIDIA. Um, they've only released these cards in China. And... Uh, why they talk a great deal about them. It's hard to really tell whether they're any good or not. Um, you can't even buy the cards. They only come in pre-built systems. Uh, they don't have a lot of drivers, so they're not very good for video games. And that's generally what everybody buys video cards for. Uh, it's unclear even what the pricing's going to be. You got a gap up today on kind of lighter volume. I suspect in, uh, Intel could go si uh, sideways. Uh, yeah, I've seen the he headlines about them talking about building their next chip plant. Um, there is a uh, ruling uh, due, I think, in the next couple of weeks out of the Supreme Court that could have a big effect on a lot of these companies uh, that have to deal with the EPA. Uh, and I th 
maybe one of the reasons why you got a little bounce out of here is thinking that they know what the Supreme Court's going to say about it. Uh, a lot of the rulings uh, have gone against uh, the government uh, in their belief that they don't really have to pass laws. They just have to give authority to regulatory bodies for uh, unelected uh, bureaucrats. Uh, the Supreme Court is kind of shooting that down. So, I mean, the big problem with uh, any company trying to manufacture chips in this country uh, is the uh, incredibly burden, burdensome um, uh, laws on that. Uh, they use a lot of water, and it has to be fairly pristine water. It, it, it is a bad climate, even with the Chinese threatening Taiwan. It's still a kind of a bad thing to open up uh, chip companies here in the United States. Uh, we have a real NIMBY, not my backyard, for uh, making chips, uh, exploring for oil. Um, I don't know what these people are thinking, where these things come from. Uh, they're probably uh, it's probably preferable to do this in the United States, where there were probably at least some oversight. But uh, making uh, a argument that uh, if we just don't have them here, they're not going to do that somewhere else is uh, pretty ridiculous. So not a big fan of Intel. As I said, I think they've got a lot of pain to go. I'd like to see a retest of 3660 on lighter volume for even a trade. But uh, of the companies that probably still have problems, uh, Intel does. Uh, and one of the problems is that a lot of the movers and shakers on YouTube uh, that uh, talk about uh, the benefits of buying uh, one brand over another are kind of mad that Intel lied to them about uh, a few things over the last year. Uh, and uh, an economy with the truth doesn't bring a lot of uh, gravitas to their claims uh, that can't be proven now on these video cards that are hidden in China somewhere. And a lot of people were thinking maybe those actually start, those reviews start hitting, um, that they can uh, get a couple people to buy those cards and ship them overseas. So you may in the next week, um, don't know. It's hard to believe they're going to be that great without the, uh, the uh, driver software to go with them. And it's going to take them a while to get that driver software. Uh, and are they really just selling them at a discount? I can't imagine them being any cheaper to produce for Intel than they are for AMD or, uh, uh, or uh, NVIDIA. Uh, so are they just going to make lower margin in that business and steal a bit away from the other two? Maybe it cuts margins for all of them. But uh, the last thing you want to do is uh, be in a semiconductor company and show uh, the quarterly results where the margins are falling. Generally, investors do not like that. So if you go into a business and you have to kind of drop your prices to get it going, not a good thing. Uh, investors see those lower margins and just assume that everything is getting lower margins. They tend to shoot first and ask questions later. Uh, so I'm not a big fan. Maybe another quarter or two of earnings before Intel really does much of anything. To, to, okay, they're catching uh, uh, <laughs> something about snakes in here. Uh, oh, 250-pound steak. Uh uh, uh, yeah, this is what I'm talking about. Um, yeah, chip uh, chip legislation uh, to get the EPA off the back of everybody. Um, one of the reasons is they use a, not a whole lot, but they do use a lot of uh, of chemicals. Uh, in the uh, process and you know having big brother uh, looking over your shoulder every day doesn't mean you're doing something wrong but it does mean that it's very hard to do something and if you can do it in a foreign country uh, why bother uh, making a plant or one in here and it doesn't mean you have to give everything up 
There is a cachet with being in the United States and being protected by its some almost 20,000 nuclear weapons. Uh, but it's hard to uh, sell something when someone has a definitive price di uh, uh, difference between you and them. Uh, Going to wrap up the show when we come back. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. As we return, talking about big crocodiles and big, uh, I mean, big alligators and big uh, pythons in the den. Always interesting when the market kind of decides to go sideways for a little bit. Uh, anyway, uh, what do we have out here? Uh, go ahead and wrap up the day. Yeah, kind of stuck here. I don't see a whole lot higher. Uh, I'm not a big fan of sticking my neck out, but at the same time, I wonder how many people want to go short. I'm looking for a pullback into the low 3,800s in the S&P cash. Uh, on lighter volume, uh, I probably think it would be time to go long some stuff again for a drive to 4,000, but that's about it. I'm not uh, forecasting a great deal higher when we get there uh, or when we or, and if we get there. I'm going to treat it just like driving uh, in the heaviest fog and snowstorm that I've ever drove in and that is don't believe that I can see farther than I can that's why there's so many 50 car pileups up in the north 
uh, and so few down here in Florida. Although we do get fog from time to time, but generally it's not ever that bad, at least down around here. Uh, anyway, we're looking at uh, a market that is up, and there's a bit of short squeezing going on. A lot of people uh, shorted the market when it was up about 40, 45 points in the S&P. So could we see a little, you know, could we see 3,900? I think we could uh, by the close, maybe a little bit more than that, just on the short squeeze from people over the last few days. I continue to get a lot of mail chastising me for thinking the market could go up any day much less one day, uh, and uh, they tell me about the end of the world incessantly. Generally, when those people give up on that, the market uh, in a bear market starts heading back lower after they give up. Um, but uh, just remember that the market's uh, going up about three-fourths of the time, maybe just not as much on the downside in a bear market. Uh, and probably have till July 4th to see the ugliness so when you can, not when you have to, we'll be back. Like bad rash. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible.